Hey, what is going on guys? My name is D Free, and welcome back to the Dragon Ball Z discussion in which today I'm joined by a couple of people. The first of which you guys have heard on my channel before. It's Mark here. Why don't you go ahead and say what's up, Mark? Hey, D Free. Thanks for having me on. Hey, YouTubers. Hey, no problem, man. And we also have a special guest on my channel for the first time, the Frozen Particle. Nathan, say what's up, man. Hello, guys. Welcome back to yet another video. Happy to be here, D Free. Hey, man, we're happy to have you. So today we're going to be talking about Vegeta's character progression, starting from Dragon Ball Z, the Saiyan Saga, all the way to what we see currently, episode 29 of Dragon Ball Super. I really wanted to do this video because if you look at, you know, and compare the characters, Vegeta from his first arrival on Earth to what he's become now, he's an entirely different character altogether. He's made so many different changes to his personality that it's hard to recognize him at times, you know. And to be quite frank, it's just comical to me the way that Dragon Ball Super has taken his character i mean we see him come in during the saiyan saga once again as a brute as a savage doesn't give a damn about anybody else he comes in matter of fact goku paralyzes nappa and vegeta instantly blows him up like that's that's the epitome of savage right there he just doesn't care and then you know from there he spends time progressing uh, throughout the the frieza saga you know getting power-ups, etc., etc., and then, you know, we get into the Majin Buu saga and the Cell saga, and he gets stronger again, and he's still a savage, but in Dragon Ball Super, okay, uh, it's gotten to the point where, like I said, it's a little bit comical with Vegeta because we get him having these awkward, funny, comical moments like Chef Vegeta, you know, trying to impress Luis. We get these funny, funny moments, and it's like, well, what happened to Vegeta? So, uh, Nathan, he's your favorite character. Why don't you go ahead and just uh, drop some thoughts right here, man? Yeah, definitely. Um, hmm, it's very um, polarizing, Vegeta's new personality and character development, and in a sense he was kind of going backwards in Super, because in Episode 2, um, you know, he was still very prideful, and he was kind of jealous of Vegeta's power, but again in the Buu Saga he was like, okay, now I'm going to throw most of my pride away and become friends. So that's very sort of mixed signals. Um, but I, you know, mostly like... Vegeta's comical moments, if it doesn't, you know, embarrass the character too much. Um, but I think we need a good balance of sort of um, comical and action moments. I think we are getting that in Super, so that's good. So I'm happy with Vegeta's character development. But it's just so sudden, really. You know, we get like a time skip and he's all, you know, changed in the Android arc. It, it, it's quite interesting and... Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, and I think the biggest, one of the biggest, biggest changes for Vegeta is is his um his lack of arrogance. To be honest, in Dragon Ball Super, he doesn't seem to be. He seems to be so much more humble now, and I think that really was the best way they could have taken his character. Because I mean, let's be real, Vegeta has done some stupid shit. He's done some stupid shit. He's provoked Frieza. He's provoked Cell and let him transform. You know, all because of this arrogance that he's had. Oh, I'm the best. I'm the best. I'll I'll always be the strongest. But in Dragon Ball Super, you know, because this is the latest series, he's really humbled himself. He's willing to train under people for the first time when he trains with Whis and in doing so he's able to you know reach new heights he's able to get to another level and I think that once again going back to the chef Vegeta because that was such an iconic moment for this character <laughs> I mean that was like literally him humbling himself to Whis who he recognized as being the strongest being in the universe he literally put on an apron Okay, he put on an apron. When would Vegeta do this? He literally humbled himself all the way to get this guy to take him under his wing so he can get to the same level that Goku got and, uh, you know, be able to be on even ground with him. I think that back in the Buu Saga, even, when he was a little bit more humble than he was in the Saiyan Saga and the Frieza Saga, he still wouldn't have done any shit like that. He still would not have done shit like that because, you know, he, while he let Bobbidi into his head and let him make him stronger, he still didn't let Bobbidi take control. You know, he wouldn't have let some... He, just to kind of articulate this properly, because I'm not doing so... He is a lot more submissive in Super than he was at any other point in the series. Uh, Mark, go ahead and jump in here, man. I mean, okay, if we're going to talk about Bobbidi, if we're going to talk about Dragon Ball Super in general, I think one thing we have to go all the way back to Dragon Ball Z and kind of who we met Vegeta as Vegeta in the very beginning of the series. Uh, the one thing I always think about Vegeta is he's one of the only characters that we meet in the entire series that with each passing arc, we chip away at a little bit of his pride uh, and who he is as a character and break him down into a functional person in society or just a functional character to begin with. You know, when we meet him, you said like he kills Nappa and it's like savage and he, it's ridiculous. But the problem is, is like, 
that's like a natural say in death, you know, like Napa was broken and beaten and it was like he Vegeta in that sense saw it as like a prideful thing where he kills Vegeta, he kills Napa as a sense of like you know, Saiyan shouldn't suffer that way, Saiyan shouldn't like Saiyan shouldn't be embarrassed in that way. He's so like in the past with all of his thinking and all of his mindset. But as we go towards and he's still the same way when he's fighting Frieza and trying to get Frieza and the whole Super Saiyan legend and everything. And and then he sees Goku as the Super Saiyan legend and he's prideful that Vegeta or Frieza is beaten and everything like that. And then but then he has it in himself that he deserves that power. He goes and he finds that power. He goes and he fights the androids, can't do it, achieves a higher power than that, and then sees Gohan surpass him. With future Trunks, he becomes more of a father figure. Uh, and he, at the end of the Cell games, he kind of says, okay, Goku, you are the best. Like, go, he's like, Goku, you have humiliated me. I am done with my power. I'm done with everything. It's I'm just done. I'm done with fighting. You know, I'm done. I can't ever surpass him. And we don't really know what happened in that time skip. And it's kind of one of the things, like, I really want to see. Like, why is he fighting again? Did he just start training because he heard that Goku was coming back? And, like, or was he training and trying to get stronger and trying to compete with Goku or Gohan's power throughout that seven years? We don't know. And I actually think that that would be an interesting thing to learn, but I don't think we're ever really going to. But as we move past that and go into the um, Majin Vegeta thing, we know that, like, at this point, the one thing is... He wants to be stronger than Goku. That's the big grudge that he has. And we know that he's still holding on to his Saiyan pride. He knows, like, you can take my mind and my body, but you, but a Saiyan never loses his pride. And then uh, he kind of gives up on that. He sacrifices himself. And at the very end of the Majin Buu saga, or the, the fight with Kid Buu, he acknowledges that uh, Goku is better than him and always going to be better than him. But then, like, th Super throws a wrench in that because... <laughs> Um, obviously that's not how he is in Super, but like you said, he is much more humbling in the sense that he can go and he can make a fool out of himself for Beerus and Whis and do chores and all this just to get stronger. And I actually find it really interesting because one of the things that I've been arguing with, I guess, you and Nathan and everyone is, um, Vegeta, um, excuse me, Vegeta is has been like only one thing left he only has his say in pride left because that's what he's talked about with Bobbity. that's what he's been through the whole thing he still has pride of being a saiyan even frieza says and forgot no happy you know like all hell vegeta prince of no one <laughs> like he, he he still has that but in super it seems like it's kind of going away very slowly and i thought it was going to be a kind of a big character development but if we look at it, what we've seen right now it seems like it's just being chipped away ever so slowly to the point where He's just going to be, like, he's just kind of going to become a natural character and his Saiyan pride is just going to go away as he becomes more humble and more of, like, a human being or earthling or whatever you want to say. Uh, anyway, that's all I really have to say. <laughs> no, no, and, and then you touched, you touched on a couple of things that I was going to bring up, too, because the I think that the turning point for Vegeta was the Kid Buu fight where he came to the realization that, you know, Goku, you are the strongest, and he, you know, he really was just like, yo, I, there's nothing I can do about this. Now, although, like you said, Super kind of throws a wrench in that because they get to equal power, they get to equal grounds, but, you know, he, he really did, once again, come to the realization within himself that this guy is somebody that I've always, you know, kind of, held to a higher standard. I've always been chasing this guy. What's the point of chasing this guy? What does that do for me? You know, so he kind of came to that realization, Goku, you're the strongest. That's how it's going to be, you know, and um, getting into the super territory, honestly, you know, I was going to bring up the the same pride thing too, but I honestly look at Vegeta more as a human at this point, as funny as it mm -hmm. sounds, because being around those earthlings, being around, you know, Trunks and Bulma, which is a whole nother dynamic because we're seeing moments with Vegeta and Bulma, like her kissing him, like that shit never happened in Dragon Ball Z. There's this like, <laughs> and then that moment, that video, like, I'm sorry, the, the episode with the chef Vegeta, you know, they were, they were having actual interactions. I was like, these guys never had interactions in Dragon Ball Z. It never happened. They just never, mm -hmm. never did. And you can tell that the influence from these characters is really just starting to rub off on Vegeta. He's comfortable. That's what it is. There's no mm -hmm. point in holding on to that pride for him at this point. It doesn't do anything for him. It just makes him arrogant. You know, he's he's letting it all go. And I can see it, like you said, slowly chipping away in Super. He's just not that anymore. I think that the biggest thing for him and probably the biggest part of his development is becoming more of a human, you know, getting humanized by these other characters and influenced by them, which is something that he was completely 
opposed to, which is how Majin Vegeta came about in the first place, because he hated how he got weaker, how he started, you know, getting comfortable and all these other things, and he wanted to get back to the way he was. But mm-hmm. then he does a complete 180, and he's right back where he started at before that happened. But he's comfortable now. You know, he's reaching new heights. He's he's perfectly okay with the way things turned out so i think that vegeta has had a lot of character progression throughout dragon ball z factoring in super as well is there anything else that uh you wanted to add here mark or uh nathan i'm sorry mark you just spoke (laughs) it's been a while nathan Um, i kind of forgot your name (laughs) (laughs) yeah definitely um vegeta's such a um like he his character has gone through so many creeds and sort of variations that it you know it does make for an interesting character and in super especially like his same pride like mark and you touched on has um completely almost vanished which is an interesting point which i think they um should have elaborated on mm-hmm. since that because it's such a big, you know, character development, you know, um, which I think they only sort of briefly touched on, and he's now serving Whis and, you know, even Beerus sometimes. So yeah, it, it is very interesting, and I'd just like to ask a question, which one do you think, like, which one do you prefer, sort of comical Vegeta or savage Vegeta? Because we've seen both in Super, um, obviously with him killing Freezer. so I just want to hear your thoughts, let's. Uh, I personally, Mark, you can jump in here in a sec. I personally enjoy this version of Vegeta, honestly. I I liked Vegeta before I did, but the thing is, I never was, you know, too into Vegeta before. He was never one of my favorite characters, but I can honestly say he's one of my top five favorite characters now, just because the way that Super has taken him, and it's not just the comical aspect, because while he has funny moments, like you said, he does do some savage stuff, like with the Frieza fight, he came in and just was kicking his ass, he didn't give a shit. But the thing is, I like the way he progressed. I I like the story that they've told for Vegeta so far. I like him being humbled. I like this, because this is all shit that you would never expect. So that's why I feel like, you know, this is the better version to me. I I kind of agree. And I I agree for one reason. It's just, we've seen so much of Savage Vegeta that I really feel like there's very little for that character to go. And if they were to bring it back in any way, it, it just wouldn't make sense. I mean, bringing it back with Majin Vegeta was really awesome in my opinion probably one of the better scenes in the entire series. But, you know, at that point, it was already stretching. And Vegeta had been on Earth for so long and and grown so many relationships, even whether we saw it or not, that it was already like, okay, I I kind of can see this, but is it really needing to go this far? The way Super is handling him, in my opinion, is very, very good. uh, Because basically we have a brand new Vegeta in this series, and we're going to keep going with this. And when we see Goku and Vegeta fight again, if we ever see Goku and Vegeta fight again, I'm not sure we ever will, but if we see them fight again, it's going to be as pure friends fighting at their top. Not There's going to be no malice. There's going to be no hate like we've seen in the previous two fights. And I think us as fans, like we were teased in I think chapter 6 or 7 of the manga, there's going to be no reason that we are... Like, that's going to be mind-blowing, just seeing them, like, go at it, not holding anything back. Maybe in the hyperbolic time chamber, we don't know, but that's going to be really fun to see. And just going off of it, I do have, like, one last question. I know this is going on for a while, but if if we've seen, like, Vegeta in Fukatsu no F, Whis tells him he has a chip on his shoulder and he needs to get rid of it. But that doesn't, I don't think that was said in Fukatsu no F, but what is holding back Vegeta from being strong? I mean, we know what... It's holding back Goku. That's what Whis has talked about for all like all this time, all this time. If it's not his Saiyan pride, and if he's being chipped away on his Saiyan pride throughout the entire series, what is holding him back? I want to know what you guys think in the comment section, because that's actually a very good question to, to ask there. So, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You threw me on the spot, and Nathan didn't even answer the question, but we're good. I want to thank you guys for joining me on the video here. Uh, everybody that's watching the video made it to this point. Be sure to check out these guys. Their channels will be linked in the description. Real to real in the Frozen Particle. But that is it for us, guys. you have anything else you want to say here? No. All right. No, no, really, man. Cool. We'll see you guys later. Peace out. Hello, guys. Welcome back to yet... To... Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs>